Dove Church today, first Sunday in the new year, and we thank God for you tuning in. Thank God for allowing us to come into your homes and into your lives, and we have a word for you today. We thank him for another year in him, and it's, it's a good year, and it's a year that will stand on its own. And we bless the Lord for it. And so with that, we're going to do what we normally do. And we start by making our confession. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. A phone or whatever device your Bible is on. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe 
that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy, for your goodness. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. God, in Jesus' name, we bless what we're about to receive. Holy Spirit, we trust you to guide us and to bring us into the place that we need to be in today. Help us to think God thoughts. Help us to operate as God toward this people. They belong to him. And we ask it all and believe that you hear us when we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to speak from the subject today, continue. Everybody say continue. Continue. Early in the week, I start thinking about what I'm going to talk about the next Sunday, and this one word popped up in my heart, and it stayed with me all week. Continue. Continue. And we are in a new year. With the new year comes new expectations, hopes, and dreams. All are good, positive, and exciting, and I am certainly in agreement with all of this. In my meditation again, this word continue came up. While it is legitimate to, le to reach for what's new ahead, I believe that God is after us continuing in godly standards as we move forward. Amen. So continue. Say continue. continue. Here comes a definition for continue. And this is from the American Dictionary, the Noah Webster edition, 1828. And I like it because it still mentions God as sovereign. It's from a time where people really honored God in everything, every writing and everything. In spite of some of the peripheral stuff that was going on, he was, he was in our, our literature and everything. Uh, and so Noah Webster's edition still mentions the sovereignty of God. And, 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 and its definition of continue is, is this, not to cease from, not to cease from or terminate, not to cease from or terminate. To extend from one thing to another without ceasing. To extend from one thing to another without ceasing. Continue. While we are desperate to move on, we are really in a state of continuation. Part of going forward is not forgetting where you came from. Your next is not a static action all by itself that's not, that's, that's not connected to something somewhere. Remember that nothing just happens. 
There's a cause and effect for everything. And one thing leads to another. It overlaps. It keeps moving in, in a continual process. Your life is a continuum. And so as we look at the word uh, continuation, I, I'd like to submit to you that the way forward, the way to continue may come from old pathways. How, how you go forward is based on sometimes old stuff that came before you. The 21st century church wants only the new songs, the new church settings, the new band sound, even the new word. All to the abandonment of, say for instance, anthems and hymns, which the Bible, the old book speaks about. And church structure that gave us good spiritual formation. That helped us understand right from wrong. Helped us understand what was uh, appropriate deportment. What it looked like. What, what, what you're supposed to operate as a Christian in a world that is non-Christian. There is a distinct difference. While new cannot be a trade-off for what's right. We doing it a new way now. Well, Solomon had a, 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 a thing to kick the new thing. He said, there is nothing new under the heaven. Amen. Nothing new. Amen. You think it's new because you just got there with it. But it's not new. Yes. And even if it's new to you now, 40 years from now, somebody going to tell you that's old. Amen. That's old style. That's the way they used to do that. But when you were in it, it was fresh and popping. But I'm calling you to continue today based on old paths. One of the old hymns of the church is Amazing Grace. In its first verse it says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Then the fourth verse says this. When we've been there 10,000 years, that's in heaven, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. That means when we first got into the presence of the Lord. So in this old song, we see the complete sweep from a salvation experience, amazing grace that saved a wretch like me, to a life spent in eternity singing forever praises to God. And no long, however long we've been singing them, by the time we sung them a thousand years, 10,000 years, it's as if we just started singing them on the first day because we have no less days to continue singing. Yes. Are you out there? Yes. It's an old song with a sweeping path. Jeremiah 6 and 16 starts our text for this message. Jeremiah 6. And 16. And it says there. Thus says the Lord. Stand in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they say, we will not walk in it. 
And that's where we are sometimes. We'll say, we don't want to walk in them old ways. But the scriptures already say, it is the good way. We don't want to walk in that way. It's the right way. We're doing it different now. But is it the good way? Is it the right way? Those are the questions I fear we don't ask today as much as we should. Well, let's go back and revisit this scripture piece by piece and then th flesh out some of the implications inside of it. And, and the beginning stanza says, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path where the good way is. Let me give the historical background of this scripture. The Israelites were in a bad place. They were in a divided kingdom between the, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. One kingdom was the kingdom of Israel and the other one was the kingdom of Judah. And the kingdom split after the death of Solomon. And, and because of that, this scripture, uh, 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 the prophet Jeremiah is, is prophesying to Judah. This is a word to Judah to go back and revisit the old paths or rem re remember what you learned that helped get you to where you are. Before you got into a bad place, that was a new place. Are you out there? And he said, look to the forefathers and learn from what God had done in and through them before. The people have been urged to follow the ancient path of, of, of Moses. Look at what Moses said into your life that brought you to the promised land, that brought you out of Egypt, trusting God faithfully for miracles and for feeding, that your clothes wouldn't wear out, that you wouldn't even get sick. Sometime while you're chasing new, you need to stand on what you know in the old. Because it has kept us. I used to didn't understand the song, and, and sometimes I get popping dippity about it, talking about, give me that old time religion. It was good for my dear mama. It was good. But what they were talking about, the ways that brought them through and kept them. Those some good old ways. And sometimes even when you have children, and, 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 and this is the internet age, and we can go on the internet and look up how to minister, how to do this, how to do that, how to stop this, how to do that. And then after a while when all that fell, mama show up with, with a bottle of something that look crazy. Smell like something you don't want to even. And, 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 and it remedies the situation. I remember the days when, when, when I, I, I couldn't be sick and miss school because it would interrupt my mama's schedule. She washed, she cooked, she watched as the world's turn and the edge of night. And if I stayed home, I interrupted the schedule. Come on, anybody know I'm right about that? And so I couldn't have a sick day because... If I cough, out came the Father's John and the three sixes and the cod liver oil and some other unnamed thing that, oh, God, don't mention castor oil, all that stuff. No, the doctors say don't give to the kids, but we never missed a day of school. And in those days, we walked to school, came home for lunch, went back to school, and then walked home. Nobody picked us up at the curb. Nobody picked us up at the end of the day. And it was ice and snow, and we put on our, our boots, and we trudged through. Y'all don't remember them days. And had the best fun all the way home, throwing snowballs, doing everything, running from bullies, being chased, running from the neighborhood dog. Yeah. 
The old ancient paths and the good way are the same. They are the way of repentance. It is the way of reconciliation. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be reconciled to you. But the good old way is a way of reconciliation. Fixing it. Saying I'm sorry. I messed up. Not letting the sun go down on your wrath. Because if it go down on your wrath, you're going to wake up in wrath. Then you're going to have wrath, wrath. Amen. Uh, they are the way of fear. Honor God enough. I, I fear. I'm in reverent awe of him. And love of God. The good old way, have you know that you, you are loved by God. I, God loves me. And we need to get set with that. That God is not sitting up trying to destroy us. He didn't send COVID because, he, COVID because he's mad at us. He, he, he loves us. And he's trying to help us. And everything that, 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 that looks like it's interfering with it is of the enemy, the evil one. But God came that you might have life and that what? More abundantly. And he don't, he don't curse you and bless you at the same time. That's not his, his modus operandi. He, he is consistent. Because he continues to be the same God. Some of the characteristics of the old paths. The old paths, number one, are plain and true. They are plain and true. Plain and true. In the heavy fog, the train engineer cannot see the track. But there's a light on the front of the engine that he can see that lights up just so much in front of him. Even in heavy fog. And this light allows him to keep moving. And I want to tell you that sometime in heavy fog, all you have is God's light to just direct you. You don't see the whole path. But because you keep moving, you know you're headed somewhere. Number two, the paths are unchanging. We'd like for things to change a lot. But God said of himself that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number three, they are paths of righteousness. What path are you on if it's not a path of righteousness? It is not your right. It's God's right. What does he say? What does he expect? That's what's right. Psalm 23 and 3, part B of that phrase or that verse says, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What his name is over is right. Come on, come on. What his name is over is right. Is his name there? That's right. Is his name on that? That's right. If his name, is, is, his, is his name on that? Well, it's right. Because wherever his name is, it's right. That's almost too simple, isn't it? Number four, they are paths of plenty. Psalm 65 and 11. It says, you crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. Come on. You ought to take this as your mantle for the year. You crown this year with goodness. And your paths drip 
with abundance. Anything that drips means it overflows with abundance. Plenty. More than enough. Saturated. I have everything I need. Your paths drip. Oh, you ought to get excited at that. I just got excited in my heart. It drips with abundance. Oh, what path do you need to be on? You need to be on a path of, 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 uh, that's crowned with goodness and it's sloshing. You sloshing through abundance. Does that make sense? Number five, they are paths of life. Proverbs 2, 19 through 20 says this. None who go to her return. Nor do they regain the paths of life. And if you read up in that scripture, it's talking about going to the one that is away from God. This godless woman. This godless personality. This godless thing. He said, when you go that way, you don't, you don't get into the life path. And you've got to be in the life path. Number six, there are paths of peace. These aren't new paths. They're old paths that get you to what God has for you. Proverbs 3.17. And it said there, her, her, her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. All of them. Pleasantness. Peace. Abundance. Number seven, and the crowning one is, they are God's paths. They are God's paths. It is not possible that God would give us anything without giving us himself. First, God is the path. Say that with me. God is the path. Isaiah 2 and 3. And it says there, Many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. See, when you go up to his mountain or go into his presence, you understand and you come away on his path. Because there's something about being in his presence the, the, the writer says, in his presence is fullness and joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. God is the path. My goodness. Returning again to our scripture from Jeremiah 6.16. And it says... To benefit from the old paths, in this one scripture, God gave him some specific instruction. This will help you. To have a crowning year. To have a pleasant year. An old path founded, moving forward, continuing year. The first thing God told them to do in that verse was position themselves, stand in the ways. You can't get what God has for you next if you are off the path. And you should assess 
Am I on the path of God or am I not? You can't be off and on at the same time. You're conflicted. To benefit from the old paths, God told them to look for them to see. That means when you get to a place, you need to be looking. Is this the right path that I need to be on? Is this the path? Yeah, here it is. Why? Because I get a settling in my heart. This is what God wants me to do. That's the path. Because every path is not a good path. Even if it starts out good, if it's not a right path, it's going to end bad. Some kids that you're around, they hate to hear you go and say, I've been there and I know this. Why? Because it was on an old path. And you don't have to be a prophet to see it. All you're saying is that, can you get the best of my experience so you won't have to experience it? Because I've been where you're trying to go. Certain cultures honor the elderly. In the Asian cultures, they really did it. In the African cultures, they really did. They honored the elderly. They were the sages. They were the wise ones. And when they said something to you, you listened. And applied it. Because they had been on the old paths. And they're trying to train you so that you can establish your new future. My God. To benefit from old paths, God told them to see them as the good way, the righteous way. So when you get to the path, you got to see it as the right way. It's a good way. Now, I can't start out rocky and end up good. Some people say, well, this turned out all right. But sometimes it does not. At least get on the path right. Does that make sense? Right. Right means, God, what do you want me to do here? And if he don't tell you nothing, don't do nothing. Don't decide, I'm going to make it right. The next thing God said in this same verse, to benefit from the old paths, God told them to walk in it. To walk in something means to actually obey and follow God, as indicated by his word and work in days gone by. Because you have a testimony that God did this, he walked you through this, he walked you through this, why would he give you instruction about right living and what you need to do next and be wrong when he's walked you through this and he's walked you through that and you have a testimony and it's also in your heritage that you can look back in generation where God blessed your parents and everything wasn't perfect with them but he blessed them and walked them through and walked them through the path as they trusted him to move forward. They trusted him. And so he's, they were hearken back to Moses. But you could just go back a few generations and say, you were hearken to do it this way. You have the word of God as, as an old path to follow. This is the old path book. Follow it. It has the road map to the future. It starts out at Alpha and ends up in Omega. It's an old book with old past, but it's got new direction. Are you out there? 
And it don't stop being good because you had a change of heart. Because you want to be current to this situation. You're doing it the way we do it now. The psalmist said, when I sought the Lord, he heard me. Seek him because he has the path of life. Then, then this whole scripture concludes with this line. He said, then. Everybody say, then. Because then means... After you come through all of this and understand all of this, then here comes the next expectation. Here is the graduation into the next. Then you will find rest. Come on. You don't understand what I'm saying. See, it's how you establish the old that you find rest. See, see, you won't rest in your future, but you got to get on the path that establishes it so you can get to a then. You won't find confusion, hurt, anger, disruption, dismay, dismantling, tearing down. You will find rest. I'm not talking about death. I'm talking about rest. Rest where? In the right way, in the God way, in the way that, yeah, I caught some trouble, I caught some hell, but I'm still all right. It's been rough, but I'm still all right. It got slim in places, but I'm still all right. I found rest in the middle of troubling time. Rest. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm trying to get you to a place of rest, not convenience, but rest. Not comfort all the time, but rest. And it don't come from looking at old pathway. It's an old music teacher that teaches a new student, the prodigy. But he learned it from an old master. It's the old ballet teacher that teaches a Misty Copeland to stand on stages in New York as a principal ballerina. Then you will find rest. What is rest? Firm assurance, peace. A steady, a steady trust that comes from continuing with God. Rewards for consistently continuing with Him. The old paths lead to new breakthrough. New bounty. New conquests. New territory gain. That you never thought you would, you would alight to. How did this happen? Because I stayed on path. How did this happen? Because I remembered that there is a path of righteousness. There is a path of plenty. There is a path of mercy. There is a path that does not change. There is a path that is God. I stayed on path. And because I stayed on path, I don't expect to be a shipwreck. Andre Crouch penned a song many years ago, and here is some of its words. I feel that I'm so far from you, Lord, but still I hear you calling me. Those simple things I once knew their memories keep calling me. I must confess, Lord, I've been blessed. But yet my soul's not satisfied. Renew my faith. Restore my joy. And dry my weeping eyes. And then he doubled back and said, I tried so hard. That's the flesh. To make it all alone. But here comes the spiritual confession. I need your help. This is Andre Crouch. 
just to make it home. And that's, that's when the, 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 the refrain of the song comes back and it says, Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, where the place I first believed. Take me back to the place where I first started walking on path with you. Take me back there. Take me back. And the Bible says, and they continued in the apostles' doctrines. Blessings to you today. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you that in this, this, this year, our word is continual. That you will crown our year with goodness. And that you will establish us in the path of righteousness. So if we're moving off paths, take us back to the place where we first believed you. Take us back to the place where we first received you. Take us back, Lord. So we can go forward in you to the next thing you have for us. In Jesus' name. If you heard this message today and it was a blessing to your life, we thank God for that. But if you have not given the Lord your life, this is a good opportunity to do that. And I'm going to lead you in a confession. Repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I surrender my life to you. And I accept you as Lord of my life. I believe today in a miracle that you were born of a virgin and that one day you died on a cross and you were buried in a grave. And three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of God. And on that confession, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me today. Amen. If you made that confession, find a good church a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing, worshiping church that teaches you the old path to get to new victories, tells you exactly what you need to do to gain eternal life. It's amazing grace, but it's also when we've been there 10,000 years. We've no less days to sing your praise, God's praise, than when we first begun. Thank you, God. So we're at Dove Church, 4660 Military, at the corner of Horatio in Detroit, Michigan. Call us, 313-361-3683. Somebody will respond. Look us up at DoveChurchDetroit.org. There's also a giving link there. Send something to bless this ministry to keep us moving until Jesus comes back. We thank God for you and bless you today. Happy New Year's to all of you. And remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Be glad in it. Give God a good praise in the house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you. We encourage your financial support of this ministry. Dove Church is good ground. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at Dove Church giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. 
We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.